Welcome everyone. My name is Kurt Birkins and I'm the Assistant Executive Director for Corporate Partnerships with the ABCA. Since 1945, the ABCA has been bringing great coaching minds together to educate, mentor, guide, and support the greatest game in the world. We're excited that you joined us. We have a great webinar tonight brought to you by ABCA Convention Exhibitor OnForm. Just a quick reminder that a copy of tonight's webinar will be uploaded to the ABCA video library tomorrow via abca.org. We'd also like this to be interactive, so please post any comments or questions in the chat box at any time, and we'll be sure to get to everything towards the end of the webinar. OnForm is the ultimate mobile coaching platform for lessons, practices, remote training. They empower coaches with technology and organization to allow them to focus on what they do best. Presenting tonight will be Nate Hairgrove, Director of Sports for OnForm. Nate has 15 plus years of experience in the software industry and joined OnForm when they launched in March, 2020. He runs the sports division with OnForm overseeing both sales and marketing. Joining Nate will be Austin Lamke, Video Coordinator for the Miami Marlins. Austin has been in the video space for the past 15 years. He manages a team with the Marlins that covers the big leagues all the way down to their scouting department. We hope everyone enjoys the presentation and is able to learn all about OnForm and the many ways it can benefit both you and your players. Nate and Austin, take it away. Thanks, Kurt. Appreciate it. We are, we are excited to be a partner with the ABCA. Uh, we've been, for the last couple of years now, uh, working with ABCA. It's our uh, third year, I believe, coming to the convention. Our first one, I think, was in Chicago. It was right after the COVID year. Um, or right in the COVID year. And then, um, so this year coming up, we're excited to, to go to Dallas and all that. But all that to say, we're really excited to be here tonight. Um, thankful that my buddy Austin is able to join us. Uh, we were able to connect with Austin last year during spring training. It was really rough to get out of the cold, snowy months to get down to the warmer climate in Miami to spend some time with them. And um, we, we learned a lot from the video space. Uh, one thing you'll learn from OnForm is that we listen to our coaches, we listen to our users, and we try to take that back to our development team and say, hey, here's what we're hearing from the ground. How can we implement this? And Austin was critical to a lot of the stuff that we were able to come out with today and some of the new features that we're releasing and working on in 2024. So um, thanks, Austin, for joining us. Uh, we're Our goal today is really simple. We want to keep this as as easy as possible, just to communicate. Austin and I will have a conversation. I've got the chat window open. If there are questions, if people just want to start to fire off questions to Austin or myself uh, about on form, about how he uses it in the big leagues, how his team's using it and such on. So um, with all that, if it's good by everybody, let's just jump right in. And let me give you a little bit of background of on form. Some of you may have heard of us. Some of you may have not heard of us, but we are a mobile video coaching platform. And what that means is that we're a video-based app downloaded from the App Store that uh, allows you to an uh, record a video, you can analyze it using drawing tools, and then you can share it internally. We've got organizational skills inside of the app. Um, we are a free download. It gives you, there's some limitations to it, obviously, but we're a free download. You can you can download the app today and, and play with it and practice and, and things like that. And then we've got different subscription models different uh, tiers for, for teams and individual usage and, and, and so on. So all of that to say, that's who we are. Uh, we were founded back in 2020. Our co-founders came from two different spaces. One came from uh, a company called Ubersense he founded. That went over to Huddle Technique. And then he sold that and kind of was taking a little bit of break, tweeted something one day. And our other co-founder, founded the company called Training Peaks, and he was on his way out of that. The two of them through Twitter, or X, whatever it's called today, um, connected and said, hey, we should really talk about video. And they spent the next six to nine months talking about it, creating ideas, developing things. And we launched in March of 2020. Absolutely the perfect time to launch a video analysis app. Everyone's home, everyone's safe. And we said, Let's get this out into the masses. So that's what we did. Uh, it initially started in the equestrian space. We thought there's a really good market for horse and horse shows and horse riding. And, and there still is. But then we quickly pivoted and said, I think there's probably a bigger market in the golf and baseball and softball and track and field space. So that's where we've gone. And 
And that's where we've been growing. We have several thousand coaches that are on the app today. We have tens of thousands of athletes and users on the app today, all utilizing uh, on form in different ways. From a baseball perspective, um, we have we have launched early, we adjusted quickly, and we have found a lot of different use cases that have helped us develop into that space particularly. So what I would like to do today, and with Austin's help, um, I'd like to just kind of go through setting up on form, what it looks like, why, why even consider using a video analysis app per se, because quite honestly, I think our biggest competitor is, is this guy right here. This is our biggest competitor because everyone just whips the cell phone out, hits the record button real quick and puts it back in their pocket. One of the problems with that, and I think we would all agree is that it's going to take up a lot of storage space on your device. And then you're texting that video to that player or that coach or that mom and dad. And there's a lot of data that's being held on your device and in your iCloud, so to speak. Well, OnForm has relieved that. And we're gonna show you how we've done that throughout this process tonight. Real simply, I just, I wanted to start from the beginning. How do we get into OnForm? Download the app and you log in. We've given you several different ways through your Apple ID, a Gmail account, a Microsoft account. Austin, I think, are you guys at Microsoft? If I remember correctly? Correct, yeah, for the Microsoft. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're a Microsoft team, so uh, we we utilize that as well. Um, I will start right here because a lot of people and some questions that I've already received are, what about the Android folks? And we love our Android friends. I've got my Android right here. Um, but we had to develop the, the software on a platform to start. And we, we started with the iOS. We are currently updating and trying to bring it up to speed as quickly as possible. Um, there are some limitations from the coaching perspective. But as an athlete or anyone that you send the video to, they can view it on any device. But the coaching tools that you'll see tonight should be utilized on an iOS device. I've got an iPad in front of me. That's what you see on your screen. I use my iPhone. I have one of the new MacBook laptops that has a particular chip in it that allows me to utilize the app as well. So we've got different um, mediums for us to be able to use on form. Once we log in, real you'll see this is kind of like my home screen. Mine looks super busy because I demo and I, I work with over a hundred different sports. So I tell my wife, it's fun. My day is never the same. I get to talk with a bowling coach, a hockey coach, uh, uh, an equestrian, a golfer, and a baseball coach all on the same day. It's a, it's a really fun industry to be in. Um, but when we, when we log in, usually we see right here, there's a library, all files, there's some reference content. And then you can see down here, I've got all these different collections and different teams and individuals, and we'll get to all of that fun stuff. But first things first, I always say is like, once I've logged in and I kind of set up the app, then what? Well, the reason we're using this app is to connect with athletes. So first thing we would do is we would probably create an athlete. And so that's what we would do here. Um, I feel like I'm just rambling right now, but I wanted to jump over to Austin super quick. When you go to the start with on form, are you inviting particular players into the app or are you kind of going from a coach perspective first and just inviting the coaches? How do you kind of start? Uh, so we kind of have it tiered off. Uh, definitely we have like our accounts for our coaches. That way they can initially you know, get their setup, get going, and then they can eventually branch out, create their hierarchy by getting their players involved. You know, obviously in our organizational structure, we have players moving constantly back and forth. Um, so being able to get that coaches set up to where they get their structure and they can invite their players uh, through that method, they can utilize both. Okay. So from a video coordinator's perspective, you're starting with the coach and then allowing that coach to invite who he needs to as far as who he oversees. Is that a fair? Correct. Correct. Right. Okay. Perfect. So let's let's imagine that I'm your first coach. Lord help me, that would never happen. I should never be in charge of anyone with a baseball swing, right? They they end up in the perfect golf posture if you had me in charge. But I'm inviting inviting a new athlete here, so I would invite a new person. And as you can see, my my by default is is golf because that's typically who I'm working with. So this is going to be a baseball. And uh, Austin said, you know, you're you're the coach. You invited me, so we'll start as an athlete. Uh, my name is going to be. Very baseball. I'm going to add the person. At this point, this is always a fun one because some coaches are like, well, I may not have their their email. I may not have their cell phone to send to them. 
You can still add them to the app without inviting them. We can do that later and I'll show you how to do that. Or you can send an invite right now. And what that does is it creates a unique code that you can either have that person download the app and tell them the code. You can send it to them via text message or WhatsApp or email. There's a lot of different ways or Slack, however you want to get it to your team members. So I'm just going to add them without sending an invite. Um, let's just, I mean, again, you see that we're going to pick on the on form hat. That's going to be, um, my background and there's Barry baseball. Okay. This is his particular, this is his particular workspace. So when I'm doing an individual athlete that I'm working with, Barry baseball is my athlete. And right now I can get right into recording. Super simple. I'll go back real quick. All I did is I was on my home screen. I went to the little plus button right here and I said, add a new person. It was that simple. I entered Barry's information. I added him without inviting. The interesting part right here is you can see Barry Baseball, the athlete, was not invited yet. So all I would need to do if I wanted to invite him is long press on that, hit the invite, and it's going to go, and then I can send out that unique identifier to him. Inside Barry's workspace, now this is the easy part. This is where it gets fun. Okay, Now we're getting into the recording piece of it. I will say this right off the bat. If you're not quite yet ready to record within OnForm, you can always import video to OnForm. I'm going to pause right there. Austin, I know that you guys do a lot of importing of video. Talk to us about what you do when you're importing video. Yeah, we have a ton of video, um, and our coaches utilize it in the same way. They're constantly pulling it from just any different website, screen recording, wherever. Our coaches are constantly pulling in video from, you know, guys when they're in high school, when they're in college, you know, to where they're at now. And they have the free reign to basically upload any of those, you know, MP4s that they need from wherever sources they're getting them from. And everything is like fully accessible within this application that they can utilize any different methods they pull it from. Uh, we do a ton of recording off handheld cameras um, and off iPads and phones and everything. It gets all distributed and ran through us. We're able to ingest and import all those different clips into this application and make them all work. You and I talked about it down in Miami that you're still using, is it the Panasonic ones or Sony handhelds for a lot of your BP? Is that correct? Yeah. During spring training, you know, we pridefully do our best to try to film, you know, basically all, you know, 100, 200 hitters that we have in our organization to try to get their BP swings um, and just get everything captured. And then it basically clip it and make it as convenient as possible. So we use handheld cameras. Mm. Um, and then there's a lot of post game work that's just a lot of work, a lot of effort um, to eventually get everything in the right place. Well, a small teaser, Austin, we're working on a couple of things for down the road that's going to make that process even easier for your team. So I know you'd want to you'd want to hear that. But I'm also wanted to let you know that if you need me to come down during the spring training months and hold an umbrella over those cameras for shade, I happily will volunteer. I'm sure my wife, my wife would like to get rid of me in a couple couple of weeks to go down. But um, anyway, so importing the video is important and it's critical for what you guys do because you can't run around with iPads all day. Correct. Correct. Very much. All right. So that is that is one thing I wanted to highlight is that we do allow you to bring in video. You mentioned something about a screen recording. Some coaches are aware of what is a screen recording. Others are not. I do it all the time as a golf coach. Uh, I, I, I still teach some high school golf and some private lessons. And there's certain players that you just you'll I'm never going to get to stand and watch Tiger Woods swing and record it. But it's all over Instagram. Quick pull down screen record. Saved it upload it super quick to on form. And now I can share it out to my, my athletes. And I know Austin, you guys and your coaches do that, that as well. So let's just jump into uh, recording within the workspace. I'm going to go back to um, a workspace that I created with Austin, just for this particular thing. We're going to call it the ABCA test team. This gives you a little bit more of an idea of what I've created here. So this is a, a workspace that has a library of videos already into it. Um, and how did they get there? Well, some of them Austin recorded and uploaded from, I mean, looks like looks like uh, this one from John Birdie is probably from a Panasonic on a tripod because I see it across the way on the other side of the BP right there over the turtle shell, right? Did I say that right? The turtle Correct. shell? Correct. Yeah, Look at me. Look at me. You're ready. You're I'm learning. ready to coach, man. Put me in. The reliever, I'm done. That was a horrible joke. <laughs> um, so I saw, you can see that he pulled that in from a from an external thing. And then some of these down here, I actually recorded off my iPad when we were down there in Miami back back uh, back in March, actually. So 
recording is super easy and we have updated a lot with our recording features. So within the app itself, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna hit the red button and you're gonna get to see the corner of my desk, okay? Super interesting, trust me. But what this is allowing us to do is just to show you the different ways to record. All I did is I hit the red button on my app, come over here and first and foremost, I always just go to manual. That's the old school, put the VHS on the shoulder, hit the record button and you're holding it and then you hit the stop button recording manually. Right here, I always like to say on form is a short form video. We're not made for full length game video. Um, Austin and I have talked about this during BP, the ability to capture 15, 20 cuts when the, when the guy's in there and he steps out and someone else comes in, the way he was doing it, and you still might be, we're, we're talking through this, is that he'll start the Panasonic, correct me if I'm wrong, bud, you'll start the camera, they'll record maybe 10 guys hitting BP in the shell, and then they bring the, all of that back and then they have to trim it up off of the Panasonic or the Sony. Is that correct? Essentially, yeah. We record each person, you know, five to eight swings per group. You know, they do it four times in one group in one round, um, each round that they have. And then we end up having to splice them all up, get rid of the dead space, and then eventually merge, combine them. You know, our job, obviously, in a major league operation, we're doing our best to try to be as clean, convenient as we possibly can for these players. You know, we gladly waste our time and not waste the players or the coaches' times. So we try to give a clean, you know, product that's cut up, it's edited. There's not a lot of dead space, you know, bad pitches during BP. Um, so that's a lot of the post-game work that we go into it. Which I got to see your operation. And it, it is an absolute machine what you have your team doing, taking hours of footage, going through and finding his eight swings, saving it, waiting three more players, grabbing those eight swings, saving it, grabbing three, and, and just the amount of clipping that you have to do. I think we solved one of those ways for you if you're able to record from an iPad. But uh, speaking of the short form within manual, you know, it's a very simple start and stop. Um, super easy. Try to make it darker so you can kind of see down here at the bottom is where I hit on the manual. There's a couple other different features inside of this that not, I don't think any other apps allow within the video space. We're one of only if, I mean, there may be another out there and I'm happy to, to find out what that app is. We're one of the only apps that allows you to control the shutter speed of your device. That's kind of a really big talking point, especially in baseball or any sort of stick movement that's going to be fast. We all have seen motion blur or bat blur. When you're coming into impact and all you see is just this smear from a bat to hands, you don't get to we're one of the only apps that allows you to actually adjust that shutter speed. And without getting into super technical video space, which I know Austin could probably go into this, the faster your shutter speed, the better you're going to get for good stop motion. So we, if I hit the reset here, Apple products want you to have the prettiest picture. On form wants you to have the clearest picture. Okay, pretty and clear are a little bit different. You can see they think we want this white wall in my office here to be real pretty. So the shutter speed went all the way over to the turtle. It's going to make it such a pretty picture, but I don't care about pretty. I care about accuracy. So we always move that shutter speed over towards the turtle, depending on your light. If you're inside a, a BP cage indoors, you may have to adjust that. If you're outside, you'll see that that's completely different as well. ISO is very simply the amount of light that is capped, that is allowed in and you can increase and decrease the ISO, which is gonna help make that picture a little bit clearer as well. So that was something I wanted to highlight for you from the manual or any recording feature that we have, that's a one way that you can really get good stop motion. So that's manual. The next one is called one tap and that's exactly what it sounds like. You can see how it's starting to render and it came around full circle. Well, what one tap is, is that it's finding inside it's already ingesting video. So I had my one tap, let's go back here. I have my one tap set on the left-hand side, pre-tap, it's gonna go for two seconds. Post-tap, it's gonna go for two seconds. So I'm gonna get a perfectly trimmed four second video. Some coaches are sitting there trying to start manually and then go back in and trim kind of what Austin has to do. Others are able to just go tap, and then it records, tap, and then it records. 
baseball is a little bit easier to to time that perfectly because the pitch is being thrown and you know you've got milliseconds i don't know i'm never going to stand in a batter's box when they're throwing 90 plus i ain't doing it okay i'll i'll stand on the tee box where the ball's not going to hurt me i'm not getting a batter's box but we can at least time it from when they're when the ball's coming to to starting that tap and pre-tap post-tap duration the last recording option we have and this is one of the oops didn't mean to start that this is one of the newer ones that we've done it's called auto detect and i'm doing this on purpose just so you can see it on uh, on screen auto detect is the answer to what austin and the many coaches are struggling with and that is i've got a, a, a player going into the cage he takes 10 15 cuts he steps out auto detect solves that by it's automatically detecting a baseball swing. So we've built the app to where you can set it up as soon as it says move inside of the dotted box and the athlete gets inside the box, it turns green. Every time he takes a baseball swing, it records a perfectly trimmed two second video. So at the end of that BP, Barry Baseball steps out of the, out of the box. He's got 10 perfectly trimmed videos that Austin and his team can go through and I'll show you in a second tap all 10 of those videos if they want merge them together and he's got a what is it 10 to 20 second video by the time he walks back to the dugout he's got a 20 second video already on his phone kind of a game changer Austin tell me your thoughts on that 100 percent. it takes a lot of the post game process you know out of our hands especially during spring training you know as many as many swings as we're trying to cover and as many players as we're trying to cover and still give out that product that's clean, professional, you know, the expectations that we have for organization. You know, we ran this out there during spring training last year when you guys initially were demoing it, working through it. And I think we were very pleased with the accuracy of the timing of the swing, you know, what is actually considered a swing in the detection system and the product that it would spit out in that two second clip, you know, was extremely accurate. And it's definitely up to the standards that we were expecting for how we trim clips manually. You know, all of a sudden we have the device sitting here doing it itself. How did your players react to it? Do they I can't care? tell the difference? They can't <laughs> tell the difference. I think they care that I mean, we hope that they care because as much as we care about it, um, in the end, they probably don't care as much as we do. It's just a prideful thing. But sure. you know, at the end of the day, you know, we're spitting out the exact same process or the exact same, you know, product that we're expecting to deliver, even if we did it manually, the application through on form allows us to reach that same goal and skip 10 steps along the way and a lot of time uploading raw video files. Maybe I should have asked the question differently. How much did your team love us? <laughs> you timed yeah, us, right? right? The right, time yeah, that we saved them. Yeah, it's like when we went to, you know, winter meetings last year and, you know, they gave this exact same presentation from the ground up. You know, they were the last meeting, you know, during the same, you know, process for all of our video coordinators on form was the last one to present. A lot of guys are usually kind of checked out by that time. And then I think I looked around the entire room and the second we started going over what this application can cover, uh, every one of the video coordinators was completely locked in, completely trying to figure out how they can make this work in their system. And I think by the time we walked out here, business cards have been getting distributed through every organization, you know, in Major League Baseball. And next thing you know, you're coming out to spring training. And here we are across Major League Baseball. And every one of us is talking about ways that we can implement, you know, and grow this product with you guys. That's Mic drop. I'm out. I'm teasing. That's not what this is for. That was awesome, though. That's a, that's a great testimony. And and it's because of the times on the spring training field, walking through the dugouts with you, listening, watching you set up the tripods and the cameras, taking all that feedback. I run back to my team and say, here's all the notes I got from Austin. Here's all the notes I got from the Padres and the Pirates. And, you know, all these teams, here's what they're asking for. They get to work and start building. And that's why we've been able to, this auto detect feature, I'm going to give you a little bit of a under the hood. This is all manual process. So this is, this is an AI thing that recognizes the human in a frame. And to do that, we've actually had to feed the machine, so to speak, baseball batter after baseball batter, and then manually move dots around saying that was a baseball swing. Okay, put another one in. That was a baseball swing. And we had to do that thousands of times manually in order for the system to go, okay, AI, we understand this is a baseball swing. Batter gets in the box, takes a swing. We can go, oh, that's a baseball swing, automatically detect it. So that's where kind of under the hood, so to speak, how the sausage is made, I guess they say. Um, but it, we found that it's a really powerful product, especially for coaches who don't have full video coordinators on their team. 
I mean, I was looking at the list of attendees tonight and I've got high school coaches and uh, youth baseball programs and they don't have a full video coordinator team. They have themselves, maybe an assistant, maybe a mom or dad helping. This is a great way for you to set up a, an iPod or an iPod. Jeez, I'm old. An iPad or an iPhone together and, you know, you can start recording. A couple other features on the recording piece and then um, if there's questions, you know, someone can chime in right away. I've got some questions written down. We'll keep rolling, but frames per second. We are, in, are, we tapped into what your camera's capability allows. That's what I always say. Cause I've gotten coaches say, well, I don't have ultra wide. Well, let me talk about your device and it probably doesn't offer it or it does offer it. But, but what's interesting about this is that if you've ever recorded and I've been able to see firsthand how those Panasonics are set up for righties and lefties outside the shell. They have to open up the screen so they get the batter no matter what. We thought about that. So we, we typically allow you to shoot in 720, 1080p, frames per second, 60, 120, doesn't matter. You choose. Um, that's all part of the resolution of the picture. But we also have allowed you to go into what's called ultra wide. So I've taken... Let's just take the corner of my desk here. And if I'm in the in the BP, you can see how close I am at 1080 by 30 frames per second. There's my cell phone and some, you know, a koozie and stuff. But if I take that same 1080 3DP by ultra wide, you see how the picture got much bigger. Let me reset that so it gets pretty so everyone can see. Now you're thinking, now I'm inside of the BP, inside of the bullpen. I don't necessarily want to get a, a foul ball from junior higher right off the face. I can set this nice and close, open up the lens to ultra wide if your device allows it, and you can still record all of those swings for them. So just another feature that we've we've utilized. That's enough about recording. Now that we've got it recorded, now that we've got some individuals set up, I think the next thing I wanted to talk to you about is um, adding other people to a team or an individual workspace, excuse me. So I want to show you some of some of the attendees on here. I know coach high school or they coach juniors and on form has thought about that. So if I've got a particular athlete who's younger or I have an athlete who mom and dad still want to be a part of what's being taught or said from a coach, we've we've hopefully gone through and thought about that. So I this is my son, Connor. Again, apologize for the golf, but that's just what we do almost every day. Um so he is my athlete, and I've added members to his workspace, okay? So one of the members in his workspace is Billy Blanks, the fitness instructor. That tells you how old I am, the old Billy Blanks DVDs, right? Then, then I've invited his dad, which is me. I've invited his mom. I've invited the putting lessons. All of these people can be a part of his workspace. And you can see I've created different groups. So I've created a fitness group with grandpa. I've created an everyone group with everyone that's a part of his workspace. So think Billy baseball, mom and dad, you can have a nice chat with everyone here saying, Hey, everybody, we've got Connor had a lesson today, or there's, you know, it's a rained out. We're not having a game today. You have all this different ways of communicating right within on form and you don't have to worry about it. So that's part of the individual, the ability to record. Now let's get into a little bit of the analyzation. And this is where I want to hear some more from Austin. Cause um, this is what I think is pretty neat. Let me get out of golf. I think let's get into some baseball stuff. Let's see. ABCA. Here we go. So now let's talk some analyzation. Let's pick on, let's pick on one of your minor leaguers for now. I don't know which one, which of these guys were, what, what group we were seeing. You had four or five fields running that day is all I remember. We were, we were outside sweating, chasing, chasing you around chasing cameras around um, everyday life if that was everyday life for you but we got back in the car exhausted and i think you went and did more recording and editing actually uh so let's talk about some of the analyzation tools what what we provide you for on the right hand side is anything you can think of for analyzing a a, a movement so to speak so any of these colors you can tap on we're going to give you lines angles different uh, circles, a timer, squiggly lines, measurements, all of these are available within OnForm. I can go into grave detail on each one, but just know that the tools are there. If you have questions, happy to answer them. But if I want to say, hey, there's his head, I want to put this red one, 
there he is at zero degrees and the white one i want to be um an a uh, an arrow to his shoe there we go and i can analyze this so now i'm going through and i'm going to measure or i'm going to start to talk about this and show the player here you go your hands are perfect i don't know don't take any of this as gospel i don't know what i'm talking about but your hands are great here and look at that it's a home run okay look at your toe it's amazing All right so this is the tools that we empower you with kicking it over to my buddy austin how are your coaches utilizing the tools are they using them in person are they using them kind of like post maybe in the in the, the locker room kind of a thing so Talk they do a lot that. of they do a lot of it you know based upon the individual hitter like everybody learns differently some people are visual learners some people are you know communication learners you know so it depends on the environment some guys can be in the cage with everything else going on as we do uh, we actually have a mac computer set up that mirrors to you know a gigantic tv in our cage and we'll pull up the whole on-form application upload whatever videos we need to and then they can pretty much just do a seminar they can pretty much just sit gather everybody around if it needs to be a group setting if somebody's you know wanting to teach like the rest of the group as well and they can just start playing around with all these different features you know all the different cues and stuff like that um, and then also we have coaches at the minor league level you know there's a player that gets called up to the bit to the big leagues you know they want to let the coaching staff up there know hey this is who you're getting this is the things that we've been working on they can record the entire video they can do their audio overlays they can do their drawing demonstrations on it share that video immediately you know with our major league staff you know, and it just cuts a ton of corners. And that way, everybody is making this as seamlessly as possible, mm. working with players that are being passed along from level to level. What are your coaches using more? I'm just out of curiosity. Do you have a lot more iPads? Do you have a lot more iPhones, a mixture of both? Uh, it's Mainly, it's iPads. It's a iPads. lot of iPad usage that those guys are able to break down. Yeah, and that's, I assume, just for visualization, easier for them to see and manage kind of thing yeah the extreme convenience of the apple products how all of this just translates you know through and through like just as you were accidentally recording some of those videos on your end and we share that work group i'm yeah. over here in florida and immediately i'm looking over here and i'm seeing all of those immediately pop up so yeah. the convenience of being able to get that if this would have been a work session with a player you know you record that video for him of the swing today it's instantaneously it's already uploaded on my end out here yeah and that's that's the, that's the beauty of applications. It's a beauty of cloud storage because I'm in South Carolina recording, talking about some fun stuff. You get to pop up right away going, oh, Nate just shared a new video and I could have done some sort of analyzation. And while you're working, you can see this working in the background as well. So I, I assume your coaches like that because they can be, you, you know, you got a lot of hitting coaches across the entire organization. They can share something back and forth and immediately pull it out, check it real quick or pass it along, right? Correct. And it's something that, you know, it's a lot of this is can be confidential stuff. Coaches, they know when they're working with players, like some players can handle the distribution, you know, face to face. Sometimes it needs to be massaged a little bit, but, you know, those coaches can create their own work groups together. So our hitting coordinators at the minor league level, they want to communicate stuff at the major league level. They have their own side group, you know, that I have access to as well. So I can see some of the stuff they're doing and they'll pass along these clips and like, hey, here's so-and-so's outing from AAA today. These are his at bats, you know, as you can see, like these are things we're trying to work on. When he comes up to your way, you know, just let him know whatever's best way to, you know, communicate that. So you're able, I mean, that just light bulb for me. You're able to, what are you doing, Siri? You knock it off. There we go. You're you're able to kind of like communicate before the guy ever shows up, up or down in levels, right? I mean, he, you can send videos before he ever makes it to from double A AA to triple A or triple A to, to minor or wherever you can pass all that on and coaches can already be prepared of what's coming their way. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, in the major league side of things, the minor league side of things, when players get transferred to in each level, you know, you're happy for them, but obviously you're still, you know, growing with these players. You're trying to help them get better. You know, so there's always these plans that basically get passed along to the next, you know, hitting coach, hitting coordinator, whatever. And you want to know, like, what are these guys working on? What have they been, you know, trying to finesse along the way? And basically you want to make that seamless. So being mm. able to communicate and visually show the next coach, this is what I'm passing along to you. Like, you know, he's earned his way to be here, but it's like, these mm -hmm. are still things that we're working on to get him to even the next level. Um, it's just the coach's way of communicating amongst each other, what they see, what they hear, you know, and what's actually been communicated to the player. You know, it's just a seamless process. Yeah. And that, that to me is, is like you said it a second ago about how everyone's a, a, a different learner. My wife's a school teacher and she knows this from, she teaches little first graders. God love her and her patience. I mean, married to me too, but 
she has an amazing amount of patience because everyone does learn differently, right? We're tactile. We got to feel it. We got to see it. We got to smell it, all the senses and the ability to utilize video for the player and then for the coach to be able to ingest that going, okay, here's what's coming. This guy's got early extension. He sits on his trail a little bit longer than he should. This is stuff we can work off. Piggyback that to your fitness side, your physios who are in there working, your strength and conditioning coaches who are saying, hey, we got real big issues on getting to the, the lead side faster. Pardon my ignorance, but they're trying to get to their lead side faster, okay? Let's work on this in the gym. They can start to record videos, send that to coach going here. We should be able to see a difference. I mean, I'm, does it get utilized like that? It definitely can be. You know, our strength and yeah. conditioning department, you know, as they're working with players up there, you know, they got their same thing. They have their plans for these players, how to get better, how to improve. You know, it's application allows the thing. It, it's video. It's video. It's analysis. It's breaking down angles. It's breaking down move, movements by players. I mean, there's so many more functionalities aside from hitting, there's pitching, there's, there's everything. Yeah. You know, and it's just, as an, you can make it as expansive as you want to. If you want all those different departments to have, you know, this inclusion of these are the things that we're working on the hitting side, you know, how can we translate that on, you know, the strength and conditioning side? What do you see? You know, your strength mm-hmm. and conditioning coaches are just as involved of player movements and everything. You know, they spend a ton of time, you know, researching and being educated on that. So you show them a hitting swing, they can show you, you know, different things that they see from that perspective and also use that in the weight room as well. And I saw... I, I see that across multiple sports, right? Because I, I got the beauty of talking with multiple athletes in multiple sports. And it's the, the best analogy, in my opinion, is the golfer who wins the tournament, but thanks his team, right? He's got an entire team of people behind him that's helping him, the athlete, become successful. And he understands that if without these six pillars, he wouldn't be who he is. And that's a testament to what you're saying is like, there's multiple people watching this athlete that we've invested in. Let's get him the best we can get him. And that may be the nutritionist, the physio, the batting guy, the fielding guy, whatever it may be. And through all that analyzation, I think is a great way for us to just kind of wrap up these tools and stuff right here. Um, We've we've brought a couple of new features, and I don't know how much you've used these, Austin. They've been released in maybe just the last one or two quarter, maybe the last quarter it was actually. But the ability to do a voiceover, I know that was been around for a little while, and this is kind of unique because right here you can you can very simply record this, and it's hearing my voice. So I'm analyzing this for my player. Keep your head in the circle and swing your hands really fast to hit home runs. This and it's hearing my voice. So I'm analyzing this. So I'm not going to replay the whole thing, but you get the point. I can do an analyzation voiceover. So to our point earlier, everyone learns differently. They're visual, they're audio. You can give all this to them. I'm going to discard that. Send that off to them real quickly. So they can walk away, get that video with the analyzed data on it um, before they even make it back to the locker room kind of thing. We've taken that one step further, actually. We've added what's been called here instructor cam. Hello. So I, as a coach, can now say, hey, I want your hands to be here and not here, right? And I can include that in my voiceover. So I do this voiceover, another testament of what I'm doing here. Hit save. Voiceover, another testament. I'm going to save that as test one, hit save. Now, immediately on form says, hey, do you want to share this with anyone? And I go, yeah, I'd like to share this with my athlete. Share that with Austin. So that's going to go over to Austin's file. And immediately it's going to pop up for Austin. You can see right here, we've even shown you this little microphone that it says, hey, you did a voiceover. And so Austin at any time can, to, can watch that tonight and, you know, with a glass of wine and, and laugh at Nate trying to analyze a baseball swing, right? Um, I'm going to share it along with it. others. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, several glasses of wine. Um, But that's just the way that we allow you to use different tools to help your athletes. You can draw the lines. You can do a voiceover. You can do the instructor cam. You can flip that instructor cam around if you wanted to show them a movement. So if you're trying to show them where the bat needs to be or where the trail leg needs to be, you can add that in there as well. And then we've got a couple other cool features. Uh, I'll use this unknown fella. Seems to be decent enough, I think. Might 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 have hit a few, but we can throw him in there. You can see here how you can move the 
the the tool back and forth and then we've added this little skeleton feature some people have seen it some haven't but this kind of helps for visualization for you to be able to say hey right arm is blue left arm is red right leg left leg let's talk about where you're at and let's you know kind of analyze things together that's all that is just turn it on turn it off just tapping on this little gingerbread guy up here giving giving you the quick ability to show visualization and then if you wanted to compare I come up here and hit the compare. Um, I can come in and find any other video. So if I wanted to find, uh, we'll use this one. And now I can get get him right post impact. I can get him right post impact, kind of like that. Turn that skeleton off. I can come up here and link the two. And now I can kind of be talking about where they both are just before they make impact with the ball. And then I can do any sort of analog line or stuff like that. Austin, talk yeah. to me about that. How are you guys yeah. utilizing that? And just one key component that I think, you know, the listeners might want to actually be aware of on this. So both of those videos, you know, neither one of those videos was recorded through the app initially. This is all before we had brought you guys out here for spring training, you know, and then obviously that's an in-season um, yep. swing over there from Burger. So neither one of these were recorded through the actual application. That stick figure still analyzes that swing and puts the overlay on those hitters from any imported video. We were having guys doing screen recordings from like our internal website of our internal video you know, and it would just look like one of these layouts of these presentations. And it still picks up that movement and puts that overlay of the stick figure on there. It's extremely accurate about identifying those swings. So you don't necessarily, if you have old video, you know, from your hitters that you've worked with in the past high school, college, you know, just in the off season, whatever it is, those videos don't need to be recorded through the on-form application to still be able to utilize those an, uh, analysis figures on that. That's a good point. No, that's, this, the screen recording is, is something that I, I love. I know we talked about it a few minutes ago, and it's I think it's a skill that not a lot of people utilize, honestly. I think that it's a way, instead of us trying to dig around and find, just just go pull it off of YouTube real quick. Save a clip. Instagram is my friend, man. I screen record everything on Instagram. Save it super quick. Throw it up in here. And yes, I still have the Instagram banner and the like and the heart button, but the, the, the athlete gets over that real quick when they get to see how they compare to, you know, said other person, so... Um, so those are some of the analyzation tools. Do your coaches use that use that a lot, or do they kind of pass over some of the analyzation tools? Uh, I think they definitely utilize the analyzation yeah. tools, especially that's what I'm saying. We project it in our cage on our monitors up there. That's when they really start breaking it down. These a lot of those drawing techniques that you have. They use a lot of those figure stick figure overlays stuff like that to really figure out where guys are at. You know, and it, it just breaks down more into that you know visual learner. The more you can add to it, one, it's especially at major league level, it's you know, nothing to say that these guys don't love watching video of themselves. They really do. Uh, mm -hmm. So you have their attention. They're locked in all the time um, because they just want to see. They want to see what you see in them, you know, and the more features that you can include on those presentations, the more it sticks with them. Even if it's one little component that you're trying to, you know, advertise to them, you know, whether you're showing it with stick figure, showing it with different tool graphics, that's what helps those guys remember those key components. Mm. One of the things you just said triggered something for me. I was up at... Uh... University of Michigan hockey. I know we're on a baseball thing, but follow me here. We're at the hockey team ice arena and they utilize our app. And I was doing the same thing. I'm walking around with my iPad here, talking to them, showing them. And we walk into the locker room and there's, you know, 15, 20 guys standing there. And he walks me in. I'm like, what the heck? I'm, I, you know, I'm five, seven slice of heaven. Like I'm not supposed to be in with all these big hockey dudes. Right. And he's like, Nate, show them how they do the app. So I'm showing them and I said, well, why don't you pull that screen down? He goes, well, it's not connected. I said, go get an Apple TV. He pulled the Apple TV, plugged it in. I mirror imaged my, my iPad to the Apple TV, and the place went nuts. I mean, I may have made a few jokes about how old he was and didn't understand the Apple TV, but that's a way that we can help coaches who have the facilities or a TV or a monitor that can plug into an Apple TV. You can just airplay it super quick. You can still do the voiceover with airplay. So to your point, Austin, they're in the cage. They may look up. You can be hardwired in through a, an HDMI if you want to, or you can Apple Play, AirPlay it up there, have it on the stand, record it, AirPlay it. They can look up, watch it, take the next cut. Is that are you guys doing it HDMI way? Or are you doing an Apple TV mixture both? Uh, mixture both, mixture both. Different okay. facilities, Jupiter and down in Miami, get a little different convenience. Yeah. So. That I mean, that's another another feature that that uh, we've just recently come out with too. So um, we've been able to talk about the organization. We've been talking about um, 
inviting an individual, let me talk about a team real quick. And one of the better examples I have here uh, would be my my golf team. And this will make sense to you. So this is an actual team. This is my baseball IC golf team, if you will. Okay. So here's all the members of my golf team right here on the left-hand side. They're all our individuals. So this would be the Miami Marlins and all 97 of their roster, if you will. Or this could be, um, let me see, you know, such and such school from Colorado and you got 18 guys on the roster. That's what we're talking about right here, okay? You saw earlier I could create different groups within my team. So I can create an outfielders group. I created a lefties group for golfers here. I have an everyone. And this is a way for me to share videos to everyone. This is also a way for me to communicate with everyone. So right here, I had an everyone chat and said, hey, this week you're required to send me your practice plan. And they all had to send it to me. And I, I sent my name coach and just finished mine. It's a way for us to keep our video and keep our conversation all in one space. It's another great way for you to set up as a coach. You can set up multiple teams. You could set up a coaches only team. You could set up a parents only team. You could have left-handed, you know, short people's team. You can have tall right-handed team. You can create teams however you want, but it's just another way for OnForm has provided you a way to stay organized. We've thought through the video recording. We've thought through analyzing the video. Then we thought, now we've got it all. What are we going to do with it? How do we organize this and help coaches utilize this in a very quick fashion? Kurt said this earlier in the kind of the introduction. We try to take out all of this so you can do what you do best. It, with all due respect, baseball coaches are amazing at baseball coaching they're probably not super gifted at all the technology stuff. And I say that with a lot of respect because I've talked to a lot of you and I'm a really good hitting coach. I'm a really good fielding coach. Just take this app and fix it for me. That's what we tried to do. And so creating a team, we've eliminated a lot of that. Save the video, use WhatsApp, save the video, text it, trying to find where that video was in your folder or in your iPhotos. We've eliminated that. There's a lot of different things you can do inside the, the library itself. This is something um, that if I wanted to tag or title any of the videos I've ever done, and Austin, I'd love to hear from you on this one, tagging and titling videos. So I've got all of my athletes. I'm going to pick on my son here. If I wanted to see any video that I tagged as my son, Connor, or, or I'm sorry, tagged him as the athlete, everything that's been tagged as Connor, you can see. How are you guys utilizing that? Are you tagging each athlete, ball player? Are you titling and then tagging them as righties, lefties? How are you utilizing the titling and tagging system? So go back to like our spring training examples. You know, when mm -hmm. we talked about creating a work group, like you and I are sharing that one where those clips are going into that folder. You know, mm -hmm. Sharing that work group, the most relatable thing to the coaches here is going to be rounds of BP. You know, they're going to have five guys go in there for, you know, their five different rounds of BP. And so you have the auto detect on there. You're clipping every single one of those swings, you know, and at the end of the day, you're going to have a whole, you could have, you can't have a whole folder, you know, workspace full of all these different clips of all the, the whole round for all five players that you just had. It's going to be a mixed medley of all the different players that went through that round. But what you can do afterwards, is you can literally just simply conveniently click on each one of those. You can identify just by looking at the thumbnail of the photo, click on each single one of them and basically identify, Hey, this was, you know, player a, and then this was player B. And at the end of the day, you have each one of those clips organized labels. And it's simple as just clicking and grouping and giving it a name. And it mm. makes our lives so much more easier to have every one of those players together. And then as we know from the, you know, the post work stuff, you can literally just group those and merge them into one video and distribute mm -hmm. that out. So what you're talking about is you come in here and you hit select and I would select these three videos. I could come in here, share, merge, anything I want to with them. Come in here and hit the more button. I can tag it or i'm going to edit the person those were all austin at bat and i'm going to hit done i can share them directly with austin i'm not going to do that and blow up his phone right now but you can see now i've i've tagged austin as the batter in each one of these obviously they're three different or you know two different players but you get the you get the concept i can also title or tag them if i wanted to tag them and say hey this one i'm going to create a tag so let's come in here hit the buttons up there i'm going to create a tag so I want to say, hey, this might be a new tag. Let's call him. I don't know if I have a lefty, but we're going to make it. He was a lefty. So now every video that he takes, I can tag it as a lefty. 
when I start to get thousands and thousands of videos, I want to come up here and say, hey, I want to search every lefty video, every wooden bat video, every black shoe versus red shoe video, whatever you want to tag. We actually have a basketball coach out of Australia that has over 4,000 tags in his library. I didn't know a shooting coach could ever come up with 4,000 different ways to call a free throw a free throw, but he's figured it out and he has tags all over so he can very quickly search and find what he needs. So the tagging and titling is another option that we've given coaches to very quickly find what they need. I'm sure that's used a lot uh, at the big leagues, right? Yeah. And just to try to give an example for some of the coaches in here, you know, I'm sure a lot of these guys do a lot of off season work. You know, they're working on the sides, whether it's out of season, in season, whatever it is, you have your groups of players that you do lessons with and all that type of stuff. You can have these workspaces, you know, and you're working with player A on, you know, every Wednesday, every single week, you can take all your groups, you know, all your clips from that session, you know, on week one for player A, and then he comes back for week two, but you've had, you know, seven different players roll through your, your lessons you know, since that week has passed, you can go to that filter after you've tagged it, you know, obviously with organizational skills, which this app gives you the convenience to be able to utilize that, you know, and instantly you can just filter down. Let me pull up player A. This is all the clips that we worked on from last week. And then you're just right there readily to use all the different features, you know, from the tags and the different, you know, editing tools and stuff like that. And you're mm -hmm. right there, not having to scramble around to try to figure out what did we work on last week? What can we work on this week? You're identifying and separating all of the, the nonsense and narrowing it down to, you know, the person you're working with. So I got to throw your coaches under the bus to see if they're actually doing it when they're recording, maybe directly from iPads. Have you trained them to to title it athlete, to tag it, maybe VP? <laughs> Are they there yet? <laughs> they put it all on us because they know that we're there. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> so. I was like, I was like, how easy are we going to make your job now? They're titling, they're tagging, they're merging. <laughs> You know, at the end of the day, we, we've given them a tool that makes them want to do more, you know, That's and awesome. that was our goal is, is can we give them a tool that makes them think outside that box even further of how yeah. can we communicate better with our players and get this program better? That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, so I've talked at a broad spectrum of inviting an individual. I've talked at a high level at, at creating a team. We could go into more and more detail, but I really don't want to bore into some of the some of those other details i'm happy i'm here if anyone has questions i want to kind of show one more thing about just organization and then i want to kind of give a little bit of teasers of some of the stuff that we just released last week so some of the stuff is really kind of neat um some of the stuff is is i can't demo from here because i don't have the the device with me but without further ado um on the left hand side here you see some of these other things that I've called, we have called at OnForm, we've called collections. And these are really neat ways for you to be able to share to a, a group of people or in the group of individuals without creating a bunch of different teams. So think of a collection as I want to share this video or this message with these people. And it may be, you can see here, maybe I'm a coach and I've got gold members or silver members or a bronze team or a volleyball group or a ladies league. Now, 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 look at this. If I tap on gold member, you can see a lot of these are just made up ones, but I've got different members from baseball and golf and things like that. And I can very simply just come in here. I can broadcast a message to all of those people very quickly. So if you kind of think big picture here, maybe you're a coach and you give, you've got different AAU teams you work with, or maybe you work with different individuals, but they're not all part of the same team. This is a way that we've empowered you to be able to sh send a message or a video and they don't all have to be a part of the same team, if that makes sense. So you could actually, in this case, if we wanted to, we could create different tiers of the Miami Marlins for Austin. We could create the big leagues, the minor leagues, the AAA, the AA, the, the Dominican team, and we could create different groups in here. So he could send one video but they're all not as part of the same big league team, if that makes sense. So collections is a really neat thing. We've had a lot of coaches ask us about those. And so that was recently, I think Q2 or Q3, we rolled that out. Um, and then I wanted to show in just the last minute or two, I wanted to show off some of the latest stuff. So we have recently created... You saw this little gingerbread guy. We've recently created the ability for you to tap on him. And if you're only wanting to talk about the trail side, 
So you can now come in here and eliminate some of these lines. Now watch here. Now you're seeing only the trail side. Let's get rid of those two torso ones. Now we're only seeing our trail side here. You can see the right elbow and the right leg. You see those two dots right there? If I were to tap on maybe that dot there and that dot there, throughout the swing, we're now able to measure in a 2D plane, we're now able to measure angles. Okay. I don't think Austin's seen this quite yet. Maybe you have. No. So you can actually tap on that dot and see inside angle or outside acute different angles on either side. So if I'm trying to, as a coach, have him understand to get, what is, is it knuckles to ball? I think don't yell at me if that's wrong, <laughs> but I, you know, you want to turn your knuckles down. Maybe well, you guys are all like, Nate should never coach little league. And I won't, I promise you <laughs> turn your knuckles down. If you wanted to show that and getting your elbow in the right spot or getting different angles, you want to show them. We give you that ability in a 2d fashion. It's not 3d. It's, it's, it's based on the points in a 2d plane. You can now show some angles. So that was, that is literally just released. I think Thursday before Thanksgiving. So it is fresh off the press. It's being rolled out. We're getting some great feedback on it. Um, that's one thing that I wanted to show you. The other thing is external cameras. So we're now having the ability to take a, a webcam, if you will, plug it into the iPad. So you could sit back here and control the webcam from your iPad and record it within on form. So I can imagine Austin sitting there with 75 different, no, I'm teasing, <laughs> 75 different cameras on and recording them all. No, maybe one day. But, but external, external cameras is something that we've just recently worked on as well. Um, and then shared libraries. Here's another one. I'll show you right in here, inside here. You can see that I've got inside this file that or this team that I've created with Austin, I've got 19 shared videos that he and I went back and forth with. I don't have any that are private. I can show you some that are maybe I record and I didn't want to share with Austin. But you see right here, this library is default shared, meaning every video that I, I take from this point on is automatically shared with Austin. So instead of you having to go in and share with the team and go in and share, it's automatically by default shared to anyone that's a part of this team from the moment that they start that sharing process and on. You can very quick simply come up here and, and switch to it, making it default private so they're not all shared. But we had a lot of coaches saying, man, I wish I could just take a video and it automatically go out. And so that's one way that we've been able to do this, create the team. And by default, you can get that shared out there as well. So um, I feel like I've done a lot of talking. I know that we've been able to fire through this really quickly. Um, I hate the the proverbial, are there any questions? Uh, but I, I know that um, we've covered a lot of material. I hope that having Austin on was helpful for some coaches because I think not a lot of people get access to uh, big league video coordinators and hearing what they do day in and day out. And I know that that can be uh, hopefully beneficial for some of our high school coaches that are on, some of our youth clinic coaches that are on. Hopefully this was a, a good time and a, and a profitable time tonight. Hopefully uh, maybe you learned something. If you didn't, tell somebody you learned something. <laughs> that would be awesome. Um, yeah, Nate, but, I just got one thing um, real please. fast before we pass this off. Um, one, thanks for having me. I appreciate, you know, being able to give my perspective. But just to try to help those coaches, like really, I know when I sat in on this first presentation that I had, the wheels were turning. Wheels were turning about how can I use it? What can I use it for? All this type of stuff was just going through that there is something there that can help make my organization better, my operation better, and my communication to the players better. And what is it that's actually going to get me there? And once we finally, you know, started getting time to process everything that we just took in, you know, and figured out what, how our workflow actually, you know, is utilized and how this application can make it easier. Just obviously your guys' communication throughout the entire season, you know, as we finesse this thing to add on features, you know, the feedback that we gave you guys, you guys took all of it into consideration. And I know we're working with a ton of different levels here. I'm obviously up here, you know, with a big league organization, I have a lot more resources than a lot of these coaches do. But even when you narrow it down, you know, when I first came running back to the organization to tell them, how badly we needed this in our program. I already had a few users that were using it on a personal basis, you know, on the personal side of things that they were already familiar with it, even knowing that that was their testimony that, mm -hmm. Hey, there's something here for us as well. Like how can we can streamline this for everybody? Um, but if those coaches just sit there and think about, you know, different ways that they can utilize this, the flexibility of this application and program is what makes it so convenient for us. 
You know, whether mm-hmm. you're thinking about it from a perspective of working with your strength conditioning staff, whether you're thinking about it of your small, you know, winter group lessons that you're teaching kids, you know, on the side, whatever it is, the application allows you the flexibility to branch us into whatever avenue you need from a video standpoint, from an analysis standpoint, from a convenience standpoint, you know, players love being able to get that immediate feedback, you know, and to have this, the knowledge that you have as a coach, as you're watching this, like this is your toolkit to be able to implement that to whoever you're trying to get your message to. Man, that's, that's awesome. I, I feel horrible because I had this chat opened and it was from Kurt it's like, hey, here's a link for the chat. I'm like, man, no one's. And then I clicked on the link and I'm like, oh, there's the question. So if Kurt, can I have just a second or two to run through these? I know we're. Of course. Now you okay. take your time. Take your time. All right. I apologize, everyone. Josh and, and Teresa and Will. We're going to hustle through these quickly. Um, choo, 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 choo. iPhone 15 Pro aperture setting of youth players to add parents. Yes. Did you create a team for player then add parents? To the team. So, uh, Josh, very quickly, you can add parents to an individual. So you can add Billy and you can add mom and dad to his individual workspace. Hopefully that answers that question super quick. Uh, Teresa, upload video. Yes, you can upload video, um, whatever data you need to. That's all uploadable. No problem. Overlay, I think we covered. Stopwatch, we do have that on there. Uh, We do have the ability to very quickly come in here in your tool settings. You can hit this. And as soon as you start it right there, as soon as he's done, there's a stopwatch feature. Hopefully that answered that question. You can add members to multiple teams. Yes. Austin, do you have any tips for high school coaches in terms of best practices when it comes to using the analysis tools? Yeah, I I saw that one and I've been thinking about it. Um, And I'll give you two different perspectives of one, like just from a video perspective for me. And it's also probably that you have the John Birdie video up there, which is perfect. Like consistency with your camera angles from a video side is key. Consistency is key with your video angles. Don't know what your setup is. If you're working out of a cage, if you're working out of, you know, a different facility, whatever it is, being able to set up that camera angle as consistently as you can allows you to be basically reinforce, you know, your teaching methods when you start to get to your analysis tools. So here we have John Birdie's angle. We always have our line, you know, as right there as parallel as we can with the batter's box line. And then there we can use our drawing features you know, to set the different marks and the different angles and the swing pass, whatever. So when we input a video from the following week, you know, and we try to compare the two of them, we have consistent marks, you know, that make those tools so much more visually useful. I'm very much a visual learner, you know, Mm -hmm. so when I can see just the simplicity of the lines of being straight up and down on your backside, your swing path, your extension, whatever, as long as you have consistency with your angles, and I know that's not you know, available all the time, whether we're referencing old video, new video, whatever it is. But that is one key feature that allows those, you know, analysis tools to be so useful and beneficial when trying to demonstrate your point to your player is this is what it looks like from, you know, the left to the right, your head's moving forward on your swing, a simple line with a consistent camera angle makes that so much more, you know, exploited of this is the issue we're trying to teach. Perfect. Good answer. Uh, Teresa, thanks. Will says, how much? Yeah, I can cover that super quick. All of these features are 299 bucks a year for the coach. The coach then can give the app to his athletes for free. There's an unlimited amount of athletes that can use the app. There's unlimited videos that can go into the app. So the athletes get the app for free. Mom and dad get it for free. The coach pays 299 bucks for the year annually. So hopefully that answers it. We do have a couple other options. So if you have an academy, if you've got multiple coaches, we have discounts and all that kind of stuff. And you can reach out. Uh, Kurt, I think, has my information. We can get it up somehow. We can send an email out. Um, But uh, hopefully that answered that question. Uh, Thanks, guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I think I covered most of the questions in a very rapid pace. I apologize. I got... I have four screens on my desk right now and I thought I had all of my pop-ups perfect. And then I realized I was like, and there's a question. So I apologize for that. But um, Kurt, one thing I think I wanted to do was do a giveaway, if that's okay. Of course. So one of the things I wanted to do was do a giveaway. The uh, random drawing, I did one of these things earlier. I just did a random spin of the thing drawing and it came out to a 
William Laredo. William Laredo. Did I say that name correctly from Claremont McKenna College? So I would like to give a one-year subscription to William Laredo. William, congratulations. If you're a user, thank you. We'll comp you an additional year. If that's the case, no problem. But um, reach out to me. Let me know if, if uh, is there anything I can do to help. But I'd like to give that one out to William Laredo. I don't see any other questions popping up. I know we're over the time, and I hate when people go over the time. It's like, dude, you could have wrapped this up. It's 9 o'clock. I'm going to go watch football or something, so I apologize for going over a few minutes. I don't think there's football on the night anyway, so. No, you're good. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nate. Uh, thank you, Austin, as well. Uh, please, yeah, feel free to reach directly, uh, re reach out directly to Nate if you have any questions or if you're interested in hearing more about OnForm or perhaps getting it for your program. Uh, and then obviously, if you're at the convention in Dallas, be sure to stop by their booth. Um, it, just one more quick reminder, this webinar will be posted to the ABCA video library tomorrow around lunchtime. Uh, so if you guys, you know, if, if you have any other coaches that are interested in it, you know, feel free to let them know that they can go in and watch it uh, whenever they can uh, on the video library. Uh, we definitely appreciate everybody taking their time uh, or taking time out of their night to to listen to to the guys and hear more about on form. Uh, we really appreciate everyone's support and I hope everyone has a great night. Take care. Thank you. Thanks, guys.